All right, now let's talk about uh, the big scary, the arterial gas embolism or air gas embolism or cerebral arterial gas embolism. So embolism just means something floating in your blood. And if we're talking about an arterial gas embolism, we're talking about gas in the artery. So you've got a bubble that's flowing in an artery and it's made of air. It's made of the air that you're breathing. This is not a pure nitrogen problem like decompression sickness. This is a mechanical problem where a bubble gets into the wrong circulation. Most of the time it will go to the head, to the brain, thus a cerebral uh, air gas embolism or arterial gas embolism as some people call it. Uh, and so we call it a cage, C-A-G-E. Uh, and if that happens, it causes a stroke phenomenon. How does it happen? Well, we think that the majority of the time it comes with a pulmonary overinflation syndrome. In other words, as you're coming up in the water column, you're finished, you're dive, you're ascending, you know you're supposed to exhale and let a free flow of air come out so you're not trapping, expanding air in your lungs, but sometimes things happen. You know, in the last 20 feet of your dive is the biggest volume of air expansion, and you might be in rough seas and you're bobbing six, seven feet. Uh, in between breaths. Maybe you're just not thinking. Maybe you've run out of air underwater and you're bolting to the surface and you panicked and you're clamping down. Now the uh, expanding air in your lungs may shear the inner lining of your lung and let air track along that circulation. It gets here towards the heart. It may cross over, get into the circulation going out of the heart and boom, in the circulation going to the brain. All of a sudden you've got a small bubble maybe the size of the head of this pen maybe that big but it's it's a small bubble but if it's in an artery that supplies blood to your brain that's a real problem and you could get a massive stroke phenomenon that paralyzes part of your body that causes you to be unconscious or almost immediately dead these things do happen or more insidiously you might get a very small bubble that just starts to starve a small part of the brain for oxygen you might have very subtle symptoms a, lo a loss of a visual field, uh, things you can't see on one side, or perhaps a loss of balance, you become dizzy. Maybe you have loss of motor control of, of a, an arm or a, a muscle group. Maybe you uh, have a loss of sensation or a change in the way you think or speak or any of these subtle findings. Now, with any arterial gas embolism, the good news is, even though it acts like a stroke, treating a, a, a normal stroke, a blood clot stroke, is is difficult. You've got to try to get some clot busting medications or some blood thinning medications on board some of the time. This may be, be very dangerous. The good thing is if we get a uh, gas embolism in the brain into the chamber uh, within a few hours, we're usually going to be able to restore normal brain, normal tissue. Remember, time to treatment is tissue in this regard. We probably have at the outside about a five hour window but hopefully we want to get the patient a lot sooner than that. We need to get that air gas embolism treated as soon as possible, restore blood flow, crush that bubble down, let blood start moving through that artery, bringing oxygen to that part of the brain that may be dying, but is still salvageable, and get that back together. So, if someone has a big arterial gas embolism and they're paralyzed or nearly unconscious or fully unconscious, you're going to recognize this. It's, that's a no-brainer. We're going to have to get the emergency system activated. But if it's a smaller gas embolism, a very small bubble, and it causes a, a very uh, insidious change, that's where we've got to be heads up for each other. We've got to be heads up divers. We've got to look out for Dr. each Massadet, other. Dr. Massadet, 2006. Dr. Massadet, 2006. We've got to look out for each other. We've got to observe other divers in our group, especially if we're new to each other. Uh, and we need to have people understand what we're like, what our normal neurological function is. I don't ask recreational or civilian divers to uh, be expert neurological examiners. Now in Navy diving, there are very strict standards and all Navy divers learn a, a fundamental neurological exam and before you go underwater with any Navy diving, you're going to be by the book. There's an entire sweep of the crew. The dive soup is looking at each person. Afterwards, uh, the dive supervisor is going to look at each person again, each diver, check to see that they're clear, watch them for 15 minutes. We don't do this 
in civilian diving, even organizational diving. But what I do ask us all to do is pay attention to that culture of safety, and we'll talk about that in another video. But the, the culture of safety means we're not afraid to ask other divers to know who we are and to pay attention to us, and in turn, we're good buddies to other divers, and we're going to say to them, hey, I, I know what you look like and what you normally are, and if you're not acting right, I'm going to get help for you. Because, let's say with arterial gas embolism, a cerebral arterial gas embolism, first of all, if you're having a stroke type activity to the brain, you don't know it. Uh, you may have lost a whole arm function and not know it, and your brain will turn off awareness to, to that while that part of the brain is dying. So you can ask a stroke patient, uh, hey, will you move your right arm for me? And the person may move their left arm and think they're doing the command. So a diver who has a gas bubble in the brain and is losing function in the brain may not know they're in trouble. So we have to look out for each other. And then also, of course, divers like to minimize symptoms. And I know this, so I uh, wouldn't say that uh, I would be above it sometimes when I'm all excited about diving as well. But divers tend to minimize symptoms and try to keep going. And we really have to pay attention here because a gas bubble in the, in the brain, again, we've got a small window of opportunity. So arterial gas embolism uh, is associated with being uh, within the first 15 minutes or so after you come up, but that's not absolute. It tends to be a faster onset than decompression sickness. It tends to be uh, uh, related to pulmonary overinflation and it's an air bubble, the air that you're breathing, not a nitrogen saturation and fizz problem. Treatment at the scene, of course, is airway, oxygen, CPR if necessary, and rapid, rapid transport to a hyperbaric medicine facility with emergency capability.